Coast Hills family and friends. My name is Julia. I'm the Director of Ministries for Youth and Worship here at Coast Hills Community Church, where we are a Jesus-centered community, creating gracious space through acts of generous love. It's good to be together today, online in our community, worshiping our one God. It's a good day. It's a good Sunday. Our youth are headed off to the Canadians game, spending time together. There's just so much life happening within our church, and it's awesome to be a part of. And we would love to welcome you uh, to continue to be a part of this in our online gathering. It's great to gather here. And would, we, would you join us as we sing to our God?
Coast Hills and friends, we um, light the Christ candle as a reminder that Christ by his Holy Spirit is with us and that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Welcome to another online service here at Coast Hills Community Church where we aspire to be a Jesus-centered community creating gracious space through acts of generous love. This last week, I had the opportunity to spend a few days uh, at, a, at Camp Squia up near Hope at their family camp. They invited me to uh, be the speaker at their family camp. And what a beautiful camp, uh, wonderful staff, and they are doing some really, really good things. I was at their family camp where there was like multi-generational uh, group that was gathered. Uh, There's people from downtown East Side, people from... Uh, Cochrane, Alberta, uh, Penticton, Abbotsford, Chilliwack, and all over the Quesnel. And there was uh, grandparents that were there with their grandchildren, giving their uh, their kids a week off. There was also um, uh, parents there with small children, as well as the grandparents there. And then, yeah, and uh, the food was fantastic. Uh, and um, we had campfires every night where I would tell some of the stories as well as chapels. And uh, I just love what they're doing there. Roy Jansen from our congregation let us uh, in on this uh, wonderful place a few years ago when our life group then uh, spent some time at the end of August camping there on a weekend. And uh, they're going to be camping there again at the end of uh, August. And um, just want to let you know that uh, this camp is doing some really wonderful things. And the director, Rob Thiessen, uh, said to me, Kevin, could you announce it? Could you just maybe see if someone uh, has a week they could give or a couple of weeks or even the summer or in any way if they love children, they love God, uh, they want to experience something really beautiful, um, you, we're able to, you're able to volunteer uh, at camp. And uh, you could live, there's some really great accommodations, and the food is fantastic. So maybe you'd be thinking about that. If you're retired, um, if you have a, a week off, you're not sure what to do. Uh, maybe you're a young adult, and you're not uh, right now currently working. Um, we'd love for you to get a hold of Camp Squia. Information is right here, uh, Greg, or down here. Not sure where Greg's going to put it here or here. Uh, if you can contact Camp Squia, that would be wonderful. I want to really, I just really endorse the camp. There's some beautiful people doing some beautiful things uh, there. Okay, let's get at our teaching for this week. Uh, We're going, we've been leaning into Acts 2, chapter, uh, Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. And then we see that in this past, these six, six verses, it gives us a great picture of what the early church uh, looked like and what they were about. And it's a great inspiration for us because those, uh, what they were doing um, in their context 2,000 years ago, we can learn from them and say, what does that mean for us here in our context now, currently? Last, uh, last week, we talked about um, that we are a learning community, that they, uh, the early church gave themselves to the apostles' teaching. Uh, you can check that, on, on that teaching online. The week before, we talked about 
the generosity of the community, that they were, they were a caring and a sharing community. And what does it look like for us to live into that? And this week, we're going to be looking at um, that, um, what does it look like to be a worshiping community? So let's read the, the scripture again. Acts 2, verses 42 to 47, I'm reading from the New International Version. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. First question, I have a question for you before we lean into this passage and then we're actually going to jump from this passage to another passage. But when you think of worship and what worship looks like in the contemporary church, the modern church right now, what picture comes to mind? Go ahead, think about that for a moment. When you think of worship and what worship looks like, what picture comes to mind? Now, usually, maybe the first picture that comes to mind is a a group of people that are singing. And and maybe this group of people are, are raising their hands and there's a band on stage and maybe the lights are low and maybe there's a smoke machine and and uh, different color lights, and, and, um, and they're, uh, they're, they're worshiping through singing music together. Is that the first thing that came to mind for you? Now, it's not, now I, I admit not everyone would, would have said that, but I would imagine that most of you would have that picture in your mind. Um, if we're honest, sometimes that picture of worship looks pretty similar to like a rock concert. (laughs) And in fact, um, there has been an entire multi-million dollar industry built around worship music. Now, I'm not necessarily wanting to knock that picture of worship that you have. Um, And I, I, what I do want to do is to have us gain a bigger perspective and a bigger picture of what worship is. Sometimes we don't really realize the water that we're swimming in, um, because I also need to say that we as a church here at Coast Hills, we highlight musical worship. We spend uh, more than a good more than half of our time together singing together. Now, <clears throat> At camp, we were able to sing outside with just a guitar. We could hear each other, um, and that's a beautiful thing as well. Once a month, we uh, sometimes, we, we, well, once a month we do, we, we uh, put the drums away, and we just have someone on the guitar, and maybe two people singing, so that we can hear each other uh, sing as well. And, and uh, this week, we're <laughs> I think we have like the big band um, uh, that we're going to have present at AJ at that time. And we'll show YouTube videos of uh, before my sermon and, and Julia does our welcome and then leads us in a time of worship, which would be uh, singing. And so um, I want to recognize that that is a good thing as well. We, we give our resources and time and energy to it. Uh, and in fact, we know that throughout history, and in most and almost all cultures, music is used to lead people to meditate on, to spark the imagination, and to engage people with the living God. And so don't hear what I'm not saying. If you enjoy worship music, and if it touches your heart, um, and it is able to allow you to experience God, and some people will say the Holy Spirit has been present with us, by all means, please keep that a priority. But can I 
push back on that with a, for a little bit, what I want us to see is that worship is much more than merely singing and engaging with the music that might affect us in that way. In our Acts passage, there is so much going on, and all of it is worship. There's generosity, there's sharing, there's breaking of bread, there's eating, there's prayer, there's learning and listening to teaching, there's fellowship, being in community. And so that whole passage is worship. Uh, another scripture passage that is really uh, could help frame it for us, I want to jump for a moment outside of Acts and into Romans. Romans 12. Uh, we're gonna, let, let me read the Romans 12, the first uh, three verses, first two verses right now. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, so in view of what God has done for you, offer your bodies as living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, the author is saying this is your true act of worship. And sometimes we stop at this idea that um, you're then going to know his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Offer your bodies as living sacrifices. Now, sacrifice was a central way that the Hebrew priests and the Hebrew people would perform as part of their worship service. And so what the author is saying here in Hebrews, uh, sorry, <laughs> here in Romans 12, is saying that we now are living sacrifices. Because of Jesus' sacrifice, his death on the cross, and his resurrection, there is now no need for any more dying. Let's not, let's not have anything die anymore. And in fact, now the follower of God is to be himself or herself a living sacrifice. One that is... Um, um, you're, you're willingly putting yourself on the altar of God as a living sacrifice, as your true worship towards God. In view of God's mercy towards us, his love, his compassion, his, his, um, his sacrifice for us, we now then sacrifice, in a sense, our lives to God. This is our act of worship. And so we are now... Um, giving ourselves in worship to God. Notice all of the worship, all of, we want to notice all of the verses that come right immediately after that passage to understand this passage in context. Let's read some of this. Um, there is, uh, uh, it, it says, for the, by the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we, there were many, so it's, there's something happening, there's a corporate worship that's happening here. We form one body and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. Man, yeah, we need, we need some encouragers these days. If it is giving, then give generously. By the way, like many of you are, and thank you so much. If it is to lead, then do it diligently. If it's to show mercy, then do it cheerfully. So what's happening here, just after uh, the author says, this is your act of worship, then he goes into, what does it look like? Okay, it looks like living in community. It looks like Acts 2. It looks like fellowship. It looks like generosity, sharing and caring. There's a participation 
that the person that's giving themselves to worship is engaged in. We need each other. We need teachers. We need encouragers. We need generous givers. We need leaders. We need compassionate empathizers, and so on. So let's go on to the next verses. Verse 9. Okay, we're still talking about worship here. It says, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. So this is in the context of being a living sacrifice. This is in context of this is your true act of worship. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep up your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, that word prayer that we see in Acts. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Okay, stop there. This actually looks like the picture that we also have in Acts, doesn't it? Show hospitality. Share with those who are in need. Be generous with one another. This is all part of worship. So we are to practice love by honoring one another above ourselves, by sharing with others, and being hospitable with one another. Okay, let's keep going. Verse 14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. So it's simply saying you could simply be present with people. If people are happy, be happy with them. And if they're grieving and mourning, do that. It's like when we light the candle, we're saying God's present with us, but yet we are present with other people. And in doing so, we're reminding them that God is present with us. Verse 16, live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Now, let's go, uh, if you have your Bibles in front of you, you can see in um, where it talks about earlier in Romans uh, 12, 1, it says, do not confirm, sorry, uh, Romans 12, 2, do not conform to the patterns of this world. Well, what they're talking about is how this world was, uh, the world at that point in the culture was um, segregating the rich and the poor and the, the slave and the master. Uh, the, the, the male and female. And here it's saying, don't conform to that pattern. Live in accordance with who Jesus is. And Jesus came to tear down those barriers that we are to live in the midst of the, um, uh, community with one another in this way. So be willing to associate with people of low position. Be in community with people that don't look like you. We are simply to be present with people. Then it moves to the hard stuff of loving our enemies. Verse 17, it alluded to that in verse 14. Now it moves to the hard stuff. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Don't take revenge, my dear friends. But leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, It is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy's hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing so, you will reap burning, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome evil. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, I'm not going to unpack all of that, but all I want to say is that. To worship God is to allow ourselves to be in relationship with God and in so doing, we worship God through our interaction with people. We are to allow ourselves to be in relationship, intentional relationship with a group of people called the church the desire to have Jesus at the center so that we can be shaped and formed and mold, molded both individually as well as corporately into the character more and more of who Jesus is. And that 
takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of practice. Our, our life group, used to, we say to one another, we want to practice hospitality on one another. We want to um, practice the kingdom with one another. We want to uh, practice the kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. So let's care for one another. Let's pray for one another. Let's, let's share with one another. Let's be present with one another. Mourn with those who mourn. Rejoice with those who rejoice. This is all an act of worship. We are to be living sacrifices. This is much more than singing songs. And it requires an intentional commitment to a specific community that is willing to walk with you. And now, COVID has changed that in different ways. And I know, I know some of you that are continuing to track online that it's just, it's just uncomfortable for you to be with a, with a community. So um, later in summer and fall, we're gonna try to find some ways to maybe do some more online community. I know that as a little church, we can't do everything for everyone. And we kind of jumped in and we do this online uh, service for those that, that don't feel comfortable. And um, we have life groups that are meeting in different ways. But we are going to find ways to uh, connect with people. I just want to say one thing. My wife uh, started a book club with uh, people in our church. And there's a one particular uh, individual that, um, uh, uh, because of her health issues, is not able to meet. And so Sharon said, okay, let's, and they're, they're on their second book, uh, and let's meet as a community, but we are going to meet online on a Zoom. So it's reversing things because we know that um, this person uh, is not able to be with us, so let's then meet um, kind of together on, on the terms that she has, and, and it has been a beautiful community. And we are going to look at ways I could do that. Maybe I'm going to even just, uh, even simply do a, 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 a book club for those people that maybe aren't connected um, live, in the live gathering, um, we can do that for you. And so be, uh, be looking and be prepared for that. Um, hopefully in, in September we'll be doing that. If you have any ideas, shoot them off to me. Um, I just want to, uh, we, we do, we need to be engaged with people uh, to be able to live this life of worship. Um, so anyway, um, that's, that's my, you know, I, I guess that's my hobby horse today. <laughs> it's not simply songs. It's actually a community of people um, that are trying to live as living sacrifices with one another. So um, may the songs that we sing point to the one, Jesus Christ, who leads us to live in such a way that we would worship the divine through our commitment to our community to practice hospitality, to use our gifts as best we can, to serve and to be served by others, and maybe to even simply sit with those who are mourning, who are mourning, and also laugh and rejoice with those who rejoice. May we be that type of worshiping community, a Jesus-centered community that creates gracious space through acts of generous love. Would you pray with me? God, help us worship you as best we can. God, get a hold of us. And maybe you're gonna get a hold of us in the quiet of our hearts, Maybe you're going to get a hold of us and, as we sing these worship songs. And would it inspire us? Would you uh, catch our imagination? What, if it, what it means to be living sacrifices here on earth as it is in heaven, living our lives in this community that we call Coast Hills and those that aren't, don't call it Coast Hills, but that they would get connected in a community at some point Way, even virtually or through uh, live gathering and life groups so that we could learn what it means 
to live out what it looks like in Acts 2 as well as Romans 12 so that we would be molded more into the likeness of who you are, God. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thanks for being here. Peace to you, and I pray that you'd be uh, inspired by this next song before I send us out with a benediction. You stood before creation Eternity in your hands You spoke the earth into motion My soul now to stand You stood before my faith Well, friends, um, 
I hope you've been encouraged today and maybe even challenged uh, in what a worshiping community looks like. So, I send you with this benediction. May you experience the tender mercies of God. May you experience the extravagant love and grace of God. And may it go deep in your bones. And may that mercy and grace and love of God give you the courage to live within a community of people, to practice hospitality, to simply sit with people that are mourning, to laugh with those who laugh, to bless those who curse you, to use your gifts in practical ways so that God may be glorified in all we do and say. Peace to you, friends. I hope to see you next week. I worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, oh Prince.